Easter is a time to reflect on the faithfulness of God, who sent Jesus into the world to die so that we might live. Jesus showed us the heart of God. When Jesus walked this earth, He healed the sick, freed the oppressed, and demonstrated love and grace. Yet Jesus was despised and rejected by mankind. He was wounded for our transgressions, and He was bruised for our iniquities. He was willing to endure it all, though, for us. We were the joy that was set before Him. He came to save us, to heal us, and to redeem us. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today He is still pouring His love and grace on people, healing them from diseases and rescuing them from sin. Jesus is freedom. He is healing. He is love. He is hope. He is alive. Jesus came so that you might have life and life more abundantly. This Easter, may you step into the fullness that Jesus provided for you. Happy Easter from Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. He's helped me to transform, to be transformed into the image of God, which is God's purpose for my life. I have the faith now to be able to stand through anything that I go through. I know that I'm going to come out victorious on the other side because of what I've learned through this ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my second week of teaching on effortless change. And this is a book that I wrote many years ago. And we've also got study guides, CDs, and DVDs on this. But I tell you, this is one of the most foundational things that you can ever understand. And I know that the title, some people say there is no such thing as effortless change. Change is a major effort and struggle with pain and loss and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be that way if you do it God's way. God's way is to take the Word of God like a seed and you plant it in your heart. And the seed will just germinate and then your born-again spirit, everything that God has deposited in you will just of itself automatically start bringing the life that's in that seed out. That's the way that change is meant to be. The same way that you plant a seed and that seed doesn't struggle, it doesn't groan, it doesn't travail, it's just the nature of that seed to produce fruit. Likewise, it's the nature of the Word of God to change you. And if you go about change that way, then it's effortless. It just is automatic. It's natural. It's the way that God made it to be. The reason change is so painful to so many people is because they're trying to go about it in some way other than what God intended. And that does cause pain. So I've been teaching from the parables in Mark chapter 4. We dealt with the parable in Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 29. Then I dealt with the parable in verse 30 through 32. And now we're back to dealing with the parable of the sower sowing the seed. The interpretation of that parable began in Mark chapter 4, verse 14, down through verse 20. And I've already covered Mark 4, 14 through 16. And the second type of heart that the Word of God was sown in was a type of heart that got excited, received the Word with gladness, but they didn't take the time to get established. They didn't let it get rooted on the inside of them, and so they weren't able to last. That is a major thing. I talked about that a lot yesterday. If you missed any of this teaching, please take advantage of our archive programs that are on the website or get the book the study guide, CDs, or DVDs. In verse 17, it's still talking about this second type of heart that the seed or the Word of God was sown in. And it says, And they have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the Word's sake, immediately they are offended. And I tell you, this is one of the most significant things that God ever showed me from His Word, and I have lived by this. Matter of fact, in just the last few weeks, this was a major influence in the way I responded to the criticism. We've had some newspapers and some local people here that just trashed us and said all kinds of things, and, and they were lies. 
THERE'S ACTUALLY ONE OF THE HEALTH OFFICIALS THAT LIED UNDER OATH IN COURT. WE TOLD THEM THAT WHAT YOU'RE SAYING IS WRONG, AND WE EXPLAINED WHY IT WAS WRONG, AND IT DIDN'T MATTER TO THEM. UNDER OATH, THEY LIED AND MISREPRESENTED US. AND uh, THESE VERSES RIGHT HERE GREATLY INFLUENCED THE WAY THAT I RESPONDED TO ALL OF THAT. SO WHAT IS THIS SAYING? IT'S SAYING THAT THAT YOU GET EXCITED ABOUT THE WORD, BUT YOU DIDN'T HAVE ANY ROOT IN THEMSELVES, AND SO WHEN AFFLICTION AND PERSECUTION ARISE FOR THE WORD'S SAKE. THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS THAT THE LORD SHOWED ME, THAT IT'S REALLY NOT ABOUT PEOPLE HATING ME. YOU KNOW WHAT? IF I CAME IN AND STARTED A BAR, IF I CAME IN AND, and uh, YOU KNOW, DID SOMETHING, MOST OF THE PEOPLE IN THIS COMMUNITY WOULD JUST LOVE ME. BUT YOU COME IN AND START PREACHING THE GOSPEL AND YOU TAKE A STAND AGAINST OUR CULTURE THAT IS GOING INCREASINGLY UNGODLY, THEY'RE LOSING THE FEAR OF GOD, AND I START STANDING UP. IT LOOKS LIKE THEY'RE FIGHTING ME, BUT THE TRUTH IS THE AFFLICTION AND PERSECUTION COME FOR THE WORD'S SAKE. YOU KNOW, I HAD A MEETING WITH SOME OF THE HEALTH OFFICIALS HERE IN OUR COUNTY THAT I LIVE IN, AND SOME OF THEM WERE JUST SAYING THINGS, AND I TOLD THEM, I, try, I SAID IT PROBABLY A LITTLE BIT NICER THAN THIS. I CAN'T REMEMBER THE EXACT WORDS, BUT I TOLD THEM, I SAID, LOOK, I'VE BEEN REJECTED BY BETTER PEOPLE THAN YOU. <laughs> I SAID, I'VE BEEN CRITICIZED A BUNCH. IF CRITICISM WOULD KILL YOU, I'D BE DEAD. AND THEY WERE TRYING TO INTIMIDATE ME AND STUFF, AND I SAID, LOOK, I, I JUST DON'T REALLY CARE WHAT YOU THINK. I'VE BEEN REJECTED BY PEOPLE MORE IMPORTANT THAN YOU. I'M NOT SURE THAT THAT BLESSED THEM A LOT, BUT MY POINT IS, I'VE COME TO REALIZE THAT WHEN PEOPLE COME OUT AGAINST ME, IT'S NOT PERSONAL. IT'S THE WORD THAT I'M SPEAKING. I'VE USED THIS EXAMPLE BEFORE. IT'S LIKE IF YOU THROW A ROCK INTO A PACK OF DOGS, THE ONE THAT YELPS THE LOUDEST IS THE ONE THAT GOT HIT. AND WHEN PEOPLE START CRITICIZING ME AND STUFF, IT'S NOT BECAUSE OF ME PARTICULARLY. IT'S BECAUSE OF WHO I REPRESENT, BECAUSE I'M SAYING THINGS THAT DON'T LINE UP WITH THEIR WORLDVIEW AND THEIR WAY OF THINKING, AND SO I JUST HAPPEN TO GET CAUGHT IN THE CROSSFIRE, BUT THEY'RE REALLY RESISTING GOD. YOU KNOW, WE'VE HAD THINGS HAPPEN WHERE, MAN, THEY'RE TAKING AWAY ALL OF OUR RIGHTS AND FREEDOMS. WE'VE GOT THE FIRST AMENDMENT RIGHT TO uh, NOT FORSAKE THE ASSEMBLING OF OURSELVES TOGETHER, AND THE GOVERNMENT CANNOT RESTRICT US, AND YET THEY JUST ARBITRARILY CHOSE TO LET PROTESTERS ASSEMBLE WITHOUT ANY RESTRICTION ON NUMBERS. THEY DIDN'T MAKE THEM WEAR MASKS. THEY DIDN'T MAKE THEM SOCIAL DISTANCE. THEY DIDN'T DO ANY OF THIS. THEY ALLOWED MARIJUANA DISPENSARIES TO STILL OPERATE WITH NO RESTRICTIONS. THEY ALLOWED GAMBLING CASINOS TO MEET, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, OUR FACILITIES ARE BIGGER THAN ANY OF THE GAMBLING FACILITIES, AND WE CAN ACCOMMODATE 5,000 PEOPLE, AND YET THEY JUST CHOSE THIS ARBITRARY NUMBER OF 175 IS THE MAXIMUM YOU COULD HAVE, AND OUR 5,000, uh, OUR FACILITY THAT WILL SEAT 5,000 PEOPLE, WE'VE GOT A TOTAL OF 600 AND SOMETHING THOUSAND SQUARE FEET, AND THEY ONLY ALLOWED 175 PEOPLE, AND IT'S AGAINST THE CONSTITUTION. THEY DON'T HAVE THE RIGHTS. AND SO I STOOD UP, AND AS A RESULT, MAN, I'VE BEEN CRITICIZED, AND I'VE HAD THINGS HAPPEN, AND I'VE COME TO REALIZE THAT IT'S, it's NOT PERSONAL. IT'S THEY ARE, THEY'RE COMING AGAINST uh, MY FREEDOM AND MY LIBERTY IN THE SECULAR REALM, AND THEN SATAN, OF COURSE, I BELIEVE IS USING SOME OF THESE PEOPLE, WHETHER IT'S KNOWING OR NOT, AND THEY ARE USING IT TO TRY AND SHUT US DOWN AND TRY AND GET US TO WHERE WE AREN'T PREACHING THE GOSPEL. YOU KNOW, I GOT STATISTICS FROM 2019 VERSUS 2020, AND OF COURSE, THIS WAS BACK IN uh, OCTOBER OF 2020, SO IT WASN'T A FULL YEAR. I'M NOT SURE EXACTLY WHAT THEY ARE NOW, BUT AT THAT TIME, BACK, I THINK IT WAS OCTOBER THE 15TH, THERE HAD BEEN NINE SUICIDES IN THE COUNTY THAT I LIVE IN. THERE'S 25,000 PEOPLE IN THE COUNTY. NINE SUICIDES IN 2019, AND I THINK IT WAS 15 SUICIDES IN 2020. AND SO THE SUICIDES HAD INCREASED. THERE WERE MORE PEOPLE THAT HAD DIED OF SUICIDE. THE INCREASE WAS GREATER THAN THE PEOPLE THAT HAD DIED FROM THIS COVID-19. AND THE REASON? WELL, THERE'S MULTIPLE REASONS, BUT ONE OF THEM IS THAT, MAN, THE CHURCH IS THE LIGHT OF GOD. WE ARE HERE TO HELP PEOPLE. AND IN THE ISOLATION AND STUFF LIKE THIS, THERE WAS MORE PEOPLE COMMITTING SUICIDE. THE CHURCH IS ESSENTIAL. IT IS NOT NON-ESSENTIAL. 
So anyway, I stood up and we've been criticized and stuff, but it, I've just learned not to take it personally. Even though it's directed personally, even though they mean it personally, I don't take it personally. You know, when I was in the Baptist church, I started preaching things that did not conform to Baptist theology. And because of it, they were criticizing me and coming out against me and saying things. And it used to really bother me until I learned some of these things. And I remember God speaking this exact verse to me, Mark chapter 4, verse 17, that afflictions and persecutions come for the Word's sake. It's not Satan against me personally. He personally doesn't give a rip about me or about anybody else. He is totally self-absorbed, but he is promoting his cause, and he knows that people that are preaching the gospel are a threat to him, and he comes out against me and counters me, not because he personally dislikes me. It's who I stand for. It's the word that I'm speaking. And I learned not to take it personally. Matter of fact, Jesus said, Beware when all men speak well of you. I don't have to worry about that. All men don't speak well of me. And I've just learned that it's afflictions and persecution coming for the Word's sake. And like I was saying, when I was in the Baptist church, I would do good for a brief period of time. I'd be excited over the Word. I received the Word with gladness, but then I would start being criticized. The pastor would call me in and saying, you aren't preaching Baptist doctrine. You need to start doing this. And he would start criticizing me. And even though I would keep saying the same things, I didn't have the same faith and confidence in it. I was shook by the rejection and the criticism of people. And so I went to a meeting and there was a man there, Joe Nay. He was kind of my mentor. And um, I was at his meeting. There was probably 200 people or so at this meeting. And out of all of these people, he called me up to the front and then he prophesied over me. And I never will forget this. It's, this is one of the major things that I've used in just the last few months in my situation that I'm in. And he said, I see you like a runner on a track, one of these oval tracks, quarter of a mile track. And he says, you're running a race and you're leading the pack. He says, you're doing good. But the people in the stands are yelling at you and telling you that you're doing it all wrong. And I see you getting off of the track and going up into the grandstands and arguing with the spectators. And then he said, even if you win the argument, you're going to lose the race. Forget the spectators. Stay on track. Stay on track. And I tell you, that just set me free. I realized that what was happening by Satan speaking through people and criticizing me and making it personal, I was spending time trying to justify myself and explain myself. You know, Jesus is a great example in this area because in the sixth chapter of the book of John, Jesus had just fed the 5,000 people, not including all the women and children. The next day they came and they wanted to make him king, but he had enough perception to recognize that they weren't sincere about making him king. They got their belly full and they saw him as a way for them to get all of their needs met. And so when these 5,000 people came and wanted to make him king, he began to say, they said, show us another sign. Do something. You know, Moses brought down manna from heaven. Can you call down manna from heaven? And he told them, he says, I am the manna from heaven. You can eat me and live. And they said, what are you saying? Are you saying that we should eat you? They were thinking he was thinking, talking of cannibalism, which of course was not what he was talking about. And did you know most ministers today, if you were to say something that people misunderstood and they thought that you were talking about cannibalism or something, most ministers today would fall all over themselves trying to explain and backpedal, oh, please, please don't misunderstand. They would spend so much time explaining themselves. You know what Jesus did? He said, I am the true bread of life. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He didn't apologize. He didn't explain it away. He made it worse. He says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood or you don't have any part with me. That just solidified it in them that he was talking of cannibalism, which of course was not what he was saying. And the, the multitude left him. 
Most ministers today, they would beg. They would fall on their knees and literally beg people not to leave. They will say whatever it takes to have people come to them and draw people to themselves. Jesus was just the opposite. Jesus recognized that their rejection wasn't rejection of him. It was rejection of the truth that he was saying, and he did not apologize. He didn't explain himself away. There was a time that Jesus' disciples came to him and they said that uh, Herod, you know, has heard about you and Herod is is criticizing you and saying these things. And he says, you go tell that fox that I'm going to do this today and tomorrow and the next day and stuff. And he didn't care about what Herod thought about him and he even called him a fox, an animal. I remember when President Trump was criticized for talking about the MS-13 gang members and calling them animals. (laughs) Jesus called them animals. You go tell that fox. And then he he told the scribes and Pharisees, you vipers, you're whited sepulchers. You look good on the outside, but inside you're full of dead man's bones. You know what? Jesus did not get up into the grandstands and argue with the people. And through this, the Lord spoke to me that even if I started justifying myself and explaining myself and standing against the criticisms and stuff like this. And even if I won the argument, Satan won because I wouldn't be using my efforts to preach the gospel. I would be using my efforts to defend myself. I had my staff come to me many years ago and uh, they brought me some emails and things. And there was one that they showed me about, I forgot the exact wording, but it was something like Andrew Amick's the most dangerous man in the world because I give my things away. I'm not your typical TV preacher and stuff, but inside it's just all wrong. And they trashed me and they were saying these terrible things. And they, they came to me and they said, you know, we can do things to stop uh, these negative reports on the internet. And I told them, no, forget it. I said, I'm not going to go up into the grandstands and argue with the people. I'm just keeping uh, preaching the gospel. They came to me a month or two later and they showed me a whole bunch of negative things and they started showing me how that there's things you can do. Uh, I don't understand it exactly, but you could change uh, that when people type in my name, it would bring up something favorable instead of something critical. And I told him, I said, look, I told you a month or two ago not to spend any time on this. I don't want one minute of my salaries that I'm paying out to go towards defending me and trying to make me look good. I said, I'm going to preach the gospel. If I get up into the grandstands, and even if I won the argument and changed some people's opinion about me, Satan's won because I'd no longer be preaching the gospel. I'd be sitting there defending myself. And I told him, I said, just let it go. And so this exact same thing, these exact same truths have played in just the last month or two when the newspapers lied about us, said things that we've told them and explained to them that it was totally, I mean, it wasn't a mistake on their part. It was deliberate. Under oath, they lied. And yet, you know what? I'm not going to buy newspaper time. I'm not going to sit there and, and defend those things because that that Satan would win. If I was spending my television time defending myself, I wouldn't be preaching the gospel. That's what these things are talking about. Afflictions and persecutions come trying to get you off of the Word of God, over here defending yourself, taking things personally, and being offended. And I'm telling you, that is one of the ways that Satan steals the Word of God. And the reason that that works is because the Word of God isn't rooted and grounded on the inside of you. You're shallow. You don't have the depth of root that you need in order to be able to sustain the criticism, the drought and stuff. You need to be able to go deep and draw on the Lord. You know, when people come out and criticize me, what I do is turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5 where it says to cast all of your care over on the Lord because He cares for you. God made us for relationship. It says that in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, that for His pleasure we are and were created. God created us for fellowship, for relationship. There's something inside of every person that wants to be loved and you want people to like you. If you like criticism and rejection, something's wrong with you. That's not the way that God made us to be. So I believe I can understand why people don't like to be criticized. I don't like to be criticized, 
BUT WHEN IT HAPPENS, I'VE COME TO RECOGNIZE THAT I DON'T TAKE IT PERSONALLY. IT'S SATAN TRYING TO GET ME INTO THE GRANDSTANDS, ARGUING WITH THE SPECTATORS, DEFENDING MYSELF, AND SO I'VE JUST LEARNED TO CAST MY CARE ABOUT IT OVER ON THE LORD. IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT I DON'T ACKNOWLEDGE THAT, YOU KNOW, IT SOMETIMES HURTS TO SIT THERE AND HAVE PEOPLE CRITICIZE YOU AND STUFF, BUT YOU JUST TAKE IT TO THE LORD AND GOD WILL COMPENSATE YOU. GOD WILL TELL YOU THAT HE LOVES YOU. THE LORD WILL TELL YOU THAT IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT OTHER PEOPLE THINK. YOU HAVE TO GET TO A PLACE TO WHERE YOU DON'T ENJOY CRITICISM AND YOU CERTAINLY DON'T GO OUT OF YOUR WAY TO DO IT ON YOUR OWN, BUT YOU JUST LOVE THE LORD MORE THAN YOU LOVE OTHER PEOPLE. I HAD A MAN COME TO ME ONE TIME IN KANSAS CITY, AND THIS GUY JUST WALKED UP TO ME AND BEGAN TO START CRITICIZING ME AND TELLING ME EVERYTHING I SAID THAT WAS WRONG. AND, YOU KNOW, HE WAS PROBABLY CORRECT ON SOME OF THE THINGS. I DON'T DO EVERYTHING PERFECTLY. WHEN YOU TALK AS MUCH AS I DO FOR A LIVING, I GUARANTEE YOU SOONER OR LATER YOU'RE GOING TO SAY SOMETHING DIFFERENT THAN WHAT IT SHOULD HAVE BEEN SAID. SO ANYWAY, I'M NOT CLAIMING THAT I'M PERFECT, BUT ANYWAY, HE WAS JUST TRASHING ME AND SAYING TERRIBLE THINGS. AND I JUST STOPPED HIM RIGHT IN THE MIDDLE OF THE WHOLE THING, AND I SAID, WHO DIED AND MADE YOU GOD? AND THIS GUY JUST LOOKED AT ME LIKE, WHAT ARE YOU SAYING? AND I SAID, YOU AREN'T GOD. I DON'T CARE WHAT YOU THINK. THE ONLY ONE I'M OUT TO PLEASE IS GOD, AND THE LORD LOVES ME, AND I JUST DON'T REALLY CARE WHAT YOU THINK. AND THIS GUY TOOK GREAT OFFENSE. WELL, YOU SHOULD. AND I SAID, I DON'T. I SAID, COMPARED TO GOD, YOU'RE A NOBODY. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT YOU JUST WOULD NEVER SAY THINGS LIKE THAT BECAUSE YOU JUST RESPECT PEOPLE SO MUCH. I DON'T DISRESPECT PEOPLE. I'M NOT AGAINST PEOPLE, BUT I GUARANTEE YOU, COMPARED TO GOD, OTHER PEOPLE ARE NOBODY. AND THAT'S THE WAY YOU HAVE TO BE. YOU HAVE TO BE SO ROOTED, SO TIED IN TO GOD THAT WHEN SOMEBODY COMES OUT AND CRITICIZES YOU, YOU JUST TAKE IT TO THE LORD. YOU CAST YOUR CARE OVER ON THE LORD. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT HE COMFORTS US IN ALL OF OUR TRIBULATIONS SO THAT WE MIGHT KNOW HOW TO COMFORT OTHER PEOPLE. 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 1, VERSES 3 AND 4. AND SO GOD IS ALWAYS THERE. ANYTIME PEOPLE ARE REJECTING YOU AND DOING THINGS, YOU CAN GO TO THE LORD AND GOD WILL COMPENSATE YOU. AND YOU CAN LIVE WITH THE JOY OF THE LORD, THE ASSURANCE, THE PLEASURE OF THE LORD SO REAL IN YOUR HEART THAT IT JUST DOESN'T MATTER WHAT OTHER PEOPLE SAY. YOU KNOW, IN A SENSE, IF YOU CAVE BECAUSE OF PEOPLE CRITICIZING YOU, IT'S BECAUSE OF THE VACUUM THAT'S ON THE INSIDE. YOU KNOW, I GAVE AN EXAMPLE EARLIER IN THE WEEK ABOUT MY SIXTH GRADE TEACHER THAT TOOK THESE TWO TERRARIUMS AND PUT ONE INCH OF DIRT IN ONE AND A FOOT OF DIRT IN THE OTHER ONE. WELL, THAT SAME TEACHER ALSO DID AN EXPERIMENT WHERE THEY TOOK A ONE-GALLON METAL GAS CAN AND PUT IT ON A BRUNSON BURNER AND HEATED THE THING UNTIL IT WAS NEARLY GLOWING. AND THEN HE TOOK IT OFF OF THE BURNER, PUT THE LID ON IT REAL QUICKLY, AND THEN JUST SET IT ON THE DESK. AND I MEAN, IT WAS JUST A FEW FEET IN FRONT OF ME ON HIS DESK. AND HE WENT ABOUT HIS DAY TEACHING. AND WITHIN AN HOUR OR SO, THAT THING COOLED OFF. AND OF COURSE, THE POINT HE WAS MAKING IS THAT HOT AIR uh, OCCUPIES A LARGER VOLUME THAN COLD AIR. AND SO AS THE THING COOLED OFF AND AS THE AIR INSIDE OF THAT CAN CONDENSED, THEN THE CAN JUST BEGAN TO START POPPING AND CRACKING AND IT ACTUALLY BENT IN TWO AND FELL OFF THE DESK RIGHT AT MY FEET THROUGH NOTHING BUT THE NORMAL ATMOSPHERIC PRESSURE CRUSHED IT BECAUSE OF THE PARTIAL VACUUM THAT WAS ON THE INSIDE. AND DID YOU KNOW IF THE PRESSURE OF OTHER PEOPLE AND THEIR CRITICISM AGAINST YOU AND ALL OF THESE THINGS, IF IT'S MAKING YOU, YOU KNOW, JUST PRESSING YOU AND CRUSHING YOU, IT'S BECAUSE OF THE VACUUM THAT'S INSIDE. IT'S BECAUSE YOU DON'T HAVE THE CLOSE RELATIONSHIP. YOU AREN'T LETTING GOD COMPENSATE YOU AND MINISTER TO YOU THE WAY YOU SHOULD. YOU AREN'T CASTING YOUR CARE ABOUT THE SITUATION OVER ON THE LORD. SO IT'S NOT THE PRESSURE WITHOUT THAT'S THE PROBLEM. IT'S THE VACUUM THAT'S INSIDE. AND THAT'S WHAT ALL OF THESE VERSES ARE TALKING ABOUT. YOU'VE GOT TO GET ROOTED, ESTABLISHED. YOU'VE GOT TO GET GOD AND WHAT HE'S SPEAKING TO YOU SO REAL ON THE INSIDE OF YOU THAT IT WON'T MATTER WHAT OTHER PEOPLE HAVE TO SAY. AFFLICTIONS AND PERSECUTIONS COME BECAUSE OF THE WORD. AND YOU'VE GOT TO GET TO WHERE YOU STAND AND HAVE YOUR ROOT IN THE WORD OF GOD. Andrew's entire series, Effortless Change, is available as a book in either English or Spanish, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. 
You can also get this teaching as a companion study guide in English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. I would really like to encourage you to please get this teaching that I've got on effortless change. I've got it in book form, in English and in Spanish. And then we have a study guide that is the same material, but it's just reformatted so that you can teach other people. It asks questions, has the answers to them and stuff. And then we also have CDs and DVDs that were taken from my television program. And I promise you that this truth on effortless change is just something that I refer to constantly. And I believe it's a foundational truth. So listen to our announcer as he gives you some information and please take advantage of this material today. Andrew's book, Effortless Change, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of April, Andrew will be hosting a special Easter season production titled God With Us in Woodland Park, Colorado. God With Us is the original love story of a passionate God on a relentless quest to rescue His people. Also in April, Andrew will be in Woodland Park to host the annual Karis Bible College Campus Days. In May, come to Karis Bible College for the Kingdom Foundations Conference with speakers Andrew Womack, Randy Clark, and Pastor Bill Johnson of Bethel Church. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I want to let you know that when you support Andrew Womack Ministries, that we also support a lot of other ministries. We actually started the Springs Rescue Mission that is now the largest distributor of food and clothing and furniture in all of Colorado Springs. We've got ministries to orphans. We've got ministry to children that have been caught in the sex trade. Uh, we support uh, pregnancy centers. They've actually lowered the abortion rate in Colorado to one of the lowest in the nation. and. There's just a lot of things we do. So when you support here, you are helping us reach people all over the world.